It ain't like, gotta move smart. That's all you gotta move smart. Can't keep getting caught. Watch who you hang around. Watch how you walk. Just open your eyes. That's all it is for real. Like, if you could go, would you leave? If I had this case, I probably would have been living in Atlanta. But I don't really want to move to Atlanta. Why? You have gotten shot before. One time? Yeah. In the face? Yeah. I used to be a crash dummy, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I used to just do dumb shit. So, like, I just, you know what I'm saying? I was just reminiscing, like, man, then it, like, like, sh like, like, it'd be certain stuff that'd make you go back to your old ways and, like, make you be your old self. Surrounded by her daughters, Patrice Parker Murrow told us about her golden child. All he wanted to do was try to get his family, his friends out the hood. He was known to everyone as Gunu, a son, brother, friend, athlete, and rapper. He had a heart picking in his body. When they took him, they took me. Celebration of life for a Maryland rapper is stirring up some controversy. Markel Morrow's loved ones posted a viewing over the weekend at a DC nightclub. And now videos and pictures, they're surfacing all over. It's something I wanted to do. That's how Markel wanted me to do it. That's how he wanted to go out. He wanted to celebrate his life, turning up, having a party. He don't want people to be sad and crying. He always want people to be happy and having fun. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. And it seems like the DMV has been a hotbed for talent for well over a decade now. Numerous dope artists have gotten close to breaking through, but for some reason, most never make it to the mainstream level of fame. It almost seems like the area's street artists are blackballed. Even though they seem to get the most looks, numbers, and attention, it just doesn't happen for them. And if that wasn't enough, the fact that when a rapper is on the verge, they end up getting shot down doesn't help either. The latest DMV hopeful to meet his untimely demise is Gunu, aka Big 64, a young legend with his whole life and career ahead of him. Recently hit up in March of this year, he left behind a strong legacy and a void in the DMV rap scene, one that will take a very long time to fill. So today, we are going to take some time to give you the story of Mr. Goonwick himself. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Markel Antonio Morrow, aka Gunu, was born May 14th, 1997, and is from Forest Creek, Maryland. You make that shit clear. Yeah, I make that shit clear. Anywhere I go, I'm from Forest Creek, Maryland. Growing up, he wasn't really cool with his father, and as he got older, that sentiment remained. I don't talk to my father. I don't even, my mother worked. As a child, he was definitely a little knucklehead ripping and running, doing things he ain't had no business doing, like we all did. Yeah, I was bad. You know, all the kids bad when they growing up. Guns, you know what I'm saying? Doing bad shit, smoking and shit. You know how it be. And as time moved on, naturally, Gunu would find himself in the midst of the streets and all that came with it. For youngins around the way, the street drama is a rite of passage. The wild thing is though, once you get in that kind of life, it's an energy that comes with it and things can happen to you even when you're minding your business. At a house party in 2015, Big 6 Four would end up getting shot in the face due to a situation that had nothing to do with him. Uh, what led to it? Man, it wasn't, I was just cool. I was at this party, it was just, the lights was, I was like a little trap party. The shots just started going off and shit. But mind you, it was dark, you know, just shots started going off. And then the next thing, they used to shoot my way. So um, I got hit. In an interview with DJ Smalls, he would get into real detail about what happened after he first gained consciousness. I pulled up to my house. I was like, yeah, I ain't finna go to the hospital like this. Hell no. Can't go to the hospital like that. So I went, I went to the house. I was going to actually, I was going to actually, you know, my mother, my mother a nurse, so I was actually going to wait for my mother to get home. When my sister came in and she was all screaming and she took me to the hospital. In typical DMV fashion, bro was playing it cool about the whole situation and that was something he said he even had to do when he was actually on the way to the hospital in real time. His advice to gunshot victims would be of the same tune. Don't panic. Keep your cool, man. That's all you gotta do. Keep your cool. That's it. Staying true to his lifestyle choice, he didn't end up finishing school, but he ended up making it all the way to the 11th grade. I mean, bro almost got that diploma. I made it to the 11th grade. Hey, I ain't finished. I got kicked out. After he figured out that school wasn't for him, he hopped on in the booth. I started rapping. It's like, I was just like, 
shit ain't shit else to do. I get the police trying to ban me from my hood, so I'm like, shit, might as well rap. When it came to rap, he was putting in work, but he didn't take it too seriously for real. Playing around. It was just like on the block, go to the studio, go, go to leave the studio, go back to the block. Just doing this shit, then I made this shit something. Even with his nonchalant attitude towards rap, it's no secret bruh had serious talent and it didn't take long for him to take off. He would first start getting attention for music when he dropped the mixtape Beware of Goon. Uh, when I dropped the mixtape Beware of Goon, that's when I started getting my attention. But... After that, he started buzzing and would get pushed from well-known artists in the industry. My boy Ann, uh, yeah, Ann, Ann, Yachty, yeah, Herb, shout out Herbo, that's my boy. Shout out G Herbo, shout out Lightning. The newfound clout would never get to his head though, and he remained a block boy through and through. Somebody that was one with the people, approachable and humble. In a short amount of time, bro would drop an onslaught of projects like 2017's Certified Goon, 2018's Homicide Boys with his homie and fellow Maryland rapper Lil Dude, along with other releases such as Still Servant and Back From Hell. With every drop, his name grew bigger and bigger until he became a permanent fixture in the DMV rap scene, something he shall remain forever. While putting out a steady stream of music, Gunu will also have a steady stream of run-ins with the law. 12 was always clocking him around his hood since he was a teen. He would admit that once he started rapping more seriously and doing less dirt, the police wouldn't mess with him as much, but they never completely left him alone. They banned him from certain surrounding areas of his neighborhood, but it was never enough pressure to make him leave the hood completely. Eventually, he would get caught up and locked up for seven months. The charges he caught haven't been openly available as of the making of this video. But in a Say Cheese interview after his release, he was very clear he wasn't comfortable talking about that particular legal situation. So I guess we'll just let those details come out as they may. While inside, he made sure to stay busy and motivated to get out by working trade jobs and cleaning. Shit like going to trades, cleaning up and shit like things like that. A job that would have benefits such as him being able to get released early. He admitted that going to jail changed him for the better because it actually woke him up. Yeah, definitely, like, definitely a hell of a wake up call. Hell of a wake up call just to stay out the way, you know? Like, one time different, one time just stay out the way. I was, I, I never, I'm saying, really into reading books. I was reading books in there. You know? Sometimes when you find yourself at your lowest point without the luxuries you took for granted, such as your freedom, it really forces you to see the forest from the trees. When you are not in the streets, you aren't as caught up in the day-to-day -day happenings in your hood and in your crew. This can often allow you to clear your mind and find yourself even more. My bad if I'm allowing jail to sound like a yoga retreat, but when you look at the cup as half full and see the blessings in every situation, that stuff is powerful, man. Try it sometimes. Anyways, in the past, it's no secret that Goonwick had problems with illegal substances. He was very open about it, and if you followed him his whole career, it was plain as day. In the seven months he spent on the inside, he was forced to quit cold turkey, and that helped him realize that his addiction was largely mental, and if he had more control over his mind, he could get that monkey off his back. I did have a hard time when I first got it there, though. Man, I ain't gonna lie. I was sick, I was ill, throwing up. Can't use a bathroom for real, you know. Even though he was what many would consider a high profile inmate, when in jail, he never wanted to be in protective custody. He made sure he was in gym pop because he saw himself as a regular person like everybody else. In many interviews, he loved to emphasize that he was just a regular dude, and I think that made him more relatable to fans. He wasn't Hollywood at all, and he never came across as above anybody else. Gunu was loved by most of the DMV and didn't have many well-known enemies in the rap scene. The most notable beef he did have was with Q the Fool. To my knowledge, it never turned deadly, so it's safe to say it wasn't really that big of a deal. More than likely, it was simply a situation of mutual dislike and that was it. When asked in an interview a few years back how he felt about Q the Fool, he had this to say. No, you don't have to answer it. What's your relationship with Q the Fool? Shit. I don't fuck with them niggas. And sure, there's been little words here and there over the past few years, but compared to other situations in rap, this doesn't even deserve to be called B. For many years, Gunu was able to dodge numerous attempts on his life, the last attempt being about a year or so ago, where he was hit up a few times. He bounced back from that and kept doing his thing. Even with his legal troubles, you never seen him sweat. He was always fly, 
cool, calm, and collected. That's why what happened on March 18th, 2022 would hurt the DMV to its core. On that day, he was shot again on 3400 Walters Lane in District Heights, Maryland. But this time, he wouldn't survive his injuries. That Friday evening, Gunu would take a fatal shot to the back after being robbed, which leads many to believe it was personal. They wanted my son dead because he gave it up. They took his chain, they took his watch, he gave it up and they still shot him in his back. Another rapper was taken out in their neighborhood and gone too soon. This one really hurt the DMV because he was a young legend who influenced a lot of rappers that came after him. Even outside of just rap, he was an inspiration to the younger generation. The kids loved him. This really is a sad loss that will hurt deep for a long time. Gunu was a family man and also wanted to take care of his whole hood. All he wanted to do was try to get his family his friends off the hood. He was known to everyone as Gunu, a son, brother, friend, athlete, and rapper. He had a heart picking in his body. When they took him, they took me. My baby gone. Patrice says Gunu was on his way to give his sister a birthday gift. Unfortunately, it may have been that attitude that led to him leaving this earth. However, I'm not one to look down on rappers who stay close to their hood. Home will always be where the heart is, and if you have respect and a crew, you probably feel safer than when you would anywhere else. It's tough to be a street rapper and not be around and look after the same place that helped to make you who you are today. On one hand, if you stay around and look out for everybody, that makes you an easier target and everybody will have something to say if you get caught lacking. Then on the other hand, if you leave the hood for good and only focus on you and your family, that severely hurts the street cred that most rappers need for their persona to work and people will still have something to say. So it's really a catch-22. I don't think many people consider that. One thing is for sure though, he loved his hood with all his heart and nothing was gonna force him to leave. He stood on his own too and did things his way. That's worthy of respect. R.I.P. to Gunu, man. I hope you resting up, brother, and I hope your family gets the closure that they looking for. One of the ways the family wanted to grieve was to have his body propped up on stage for a farewell party at Bliss Nightclub in DC. That way people could pay their final respects. It was a gesture I could understand in a lot of ways. For one, for a rapper to be robbed and taken out in his own neighborhood, that was a level of disrespect that I'm sure he didn't appreciate. So for his family to have him standing on stage and getting love from the crowd, in a way it was like a F you to the killers, as if to say, Gunu still gets more love and respect than those that took him out. It's like having the last word. Then you add the fact that in many indigenous cultures, there's a variation of this practice where the body is up for display while loved ones party in their honor. However, the majority of people that heard about the situation definitely weren't trying to look at any things like that. They saw it as disrespectful to Gunu, a money grab, and an extreme clout chase. The family would face a lot of kickback and the video of the event would circulate all over the mainstream media. I wish that rappers would get that kind of coverage when they are alive. Maybe that could have led to them being able to get out of the hood even faster. But what do I know? Well, there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and show love to Gunu in the comments. Prayers for him, his family, and friends and may his soul rest in peace. And remember, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. Long live Gunu, man. I'm out, y'all.